What's up, y'all? Welcome to another episode of Black People Love Claremore. I am Sequoia. And I'm Jordan. Thank you guys for tuning and in. And we are excited to be back with another episode. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Um, how you doing, Jordan? I'm good. How are you been? Are you, you know, you're... I'm doing good. Here, you... chilling. I got my second backy. You got the second one? I got the second backy. You're fully dosed up, so you got you have I'm a... Fu- you have to wait that like little grace period though, right? Uh huh. So I'm almost first. I'm always done with my first week, and so mm-hmm. I have one more week, and then I am going to the gym. I can't wait to take my ass to the gym. Gonna my go. God, this home workout shit. Wow, not it, not it, not, it, not the wave. You're it's gonna not, hit equ- Equinox. You missed them, them mint towels or whatever. N- now I'm poor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Never been in an Equinox. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, we haven't run ads <laughs> yeah. on the show yet. We haven't run on ads. Ad There's no ads. ads. There's no ads. Yeah. We're yeah, yeah, we're yeah. still we're on a you know, budget. We're struggling. A tight budget. Real a tight straight, budget. Real tight. Right. That's exciting. Are you vaccinated? I got my first one. Um, nice. Uh, a week or like a week and a half ago. So I'm 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 due for the second one in a, in a few in a few weeks. I'll keep I'll keep it going. Okay. I know everybody's on the edge of their seats about whether I'm vaccinated or not. You know, hundred percent. Is... Yeah. <laughs> <Were you>? Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm I'm playing. I'm still being very safe. I'm in my house. I never see anyone. I haven't left the house in, in a year. You know, I get my okay. Uh, yeah. Yes. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You I'm look really like, pale. Yeah, you no, look no, like no. super pale. Like you haven't seen any sun for like a year. Like just, just really. Mm-hmm. Pale. And you can't see my legs in the frame right now. Uh, but um, they're like shriveled. Up. They're kind of atrophied. You know, like because mm-hmm. I don't really you, move you, much. You, because why would you move your legs? No, why would I move. So I kind of still on the couch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I, I have strong Wi-Fi. You know, I have, I have a lot of <laughs> passwords. <laughs> <laughs> strong wi-fi weak legs we get yeah that. Yes. yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah exactly <laughs> um yeah well welcome back guys to the second episode um to the third episode pardon me Ooh, this is the third episode wow Damn, this it is does the third episode. like the second though right yeah um and to remind you again like this is this show is black people love paramore it's about not intrinsically black things that black people seem to have an affinity for um and uh we're we're here to steward you through to um some 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 time tested classics you know of uh <laughs> non black shit that black people really get down for um to call you want to introduce this week's topic yeah so y'all this week we're going to be talking about something that's near and dear to your hearts i'm sure as negroes listening to this podcast <laughs> ginger ale that girl mm-hmm. the medicinal god can't you hear her can you hear her bubbling soothing your soul that canada dry Canada Drive. What's another one? Seagrams. The Seagrams. Seagram. Are you are you Seagrams gang? Are you Sweeps? No, I'm definitely Canada Drive. Gang. Okay, okay. I was like, we might have to stop this whole production. <laughs> Absolutely not. Right. No. Cut yeah. it off. That was in my contract. It was like Canada Drive. Right. You right. simply have Canada right, right, right. in my dressing room, mm-hmm. or you can leave mm-hmm. me the hell alone. Yeah. 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 yeah no. Canada uh, ginger ale. Deeply medicinal. Obviously, black remedy. Um, but we we'll get to we'll get to that later. Right. So we have our segment called In My Defense, where we bring one like toxically white or just like very, very black thing that we both like. Mm-hmm. Or one of us likes, but right. and we defend it essentially why we like it. Right. But Jordan has a good little caveat as to what this segment is intended to be and what it's intended to do. And he explains things better than I explain things. So, Jordan, I'm going to let you explain this. Well, that's very nice of you to say. I, I was just going to... We were just talking earlier before before we started recording. And I, I felt like... This is episode three. I feel like we need... It, it is bears emphasizing that this show isn't about essentializing black people or white people or any kind of people or, and, and or saying that certain things are black things or certain things are white things. I think... The point of the show and the point of the segment is specifically, and in, in my defense, is the to kind of complicate that. You know that the idea that certain things um, are inherently like you know we live in a racialized country and a racialized society, and certain things have become associated with certain types of people for a reason, for a myriad of reasons, often. But uh, but it's usually way more complicated. The story is way more interesting than that. And like black people, like all people are 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 our range you know are, are so um diverse and um and have a diverse set of interests and so sequoia and i want to like kind of show that through the show and spe- specifically through this segment i think is always really fun in the past for example we've discussed we've defended such uh far-flung things <laughs> as the late aughts seminal indie band vampire weekend yeah um, and the traditional southern black delicacy <laughs> Of pig intestines, 
Fried pig intestines. <laughs> First of all, it's not fried. It's Other- boiled. And it's called chitlins. Otherwise known okay. as chitlins. It's boiled? Oh, wow, I really didn't grasp, grasp chitlins, I guess. I think like, I tried you to block really it out. You really did it. You really did it. <laughs> it's boiled, and it is a delicacy, and it is delicious. It's mm-hmm. actually, do you know, it's, it's actually pronounced chitterlings. Chitterlings. <laughs> Wait, I didn't take my headphones off. <laughs> what? It's pronounced chitterling. Okay. Stop it. Don't say that anymore. I don't want to hear that again. <laughs> Why do you hate it? Why do you hate it? There's too Why many hate- there's too many syllables. It's not it shouldn't have that many syllables. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Your aversion to the term chitterling uh, is taking uh, me uh, the fuck uh, out. Uh, it's taking me out. Chitterlings? Oh Why would you want to put that in your body? <laughs> because that shit belongs in my body. Oh, you know? okay. It belongs on you, but it belongs in mine. Wow. Okay? All right. So, so, so oh my God. that is all to say that, yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> random, um, divergent things that we discussed on the show, and we are in no mm-hmm. way trying to essentialize anyone. And so, yeah, so this week, let's get into it. Let's um, let's get into the In My Defense. Do you have, do you have one to play or should I go first? Okay, I do have one. Mine is kind of, I feel like mine's kind of mid this week. It is a toxically white thing. And I say it's toxically white because I went to college with a bunch of toxic white people who Tell them where. donned this. I went to college at UC Santa Cruz in the Bay Area. Okay, banana um, slug stand dope. Do Let's go. Boy, banana <laughs> slugs, you know about it. You know about you know it. Okay, but the, 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 the general, after we just said we're not going to centralize, I'm going to make a generalization, for, gener, uh, generalization right now. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. cannot say that word ever. Um, but you can say chitterlings. Will, yeah, I can say chitterlings <laughs> no problem because that belongs in me. Anyway, <laughs> the generalization I'm going to make about the type of white person that roams around UC Santa Cruz. Imagine like a white person with dreads. Mm, um, I'd rather no, not. <laughs> mm-hmm, and no shoes, or if they do have one shoes, the shoes they have on are Birkenstocks. I love a Birkenstock. You can pry Birkenstocks off of my dead black ass feet when <laughs> I die, okay? Because I love those oh shoes. Oh my God. Wow. I don't think I knew that. That's very California of you. I mean, mm-hmm. it yeah. is, it is. And before Birkenstocks, there was rainbows. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you are aware of rainbows. No, not aware of rainbows. Like, oh my God, it is very California then. Yeah, it was like a thong sandal that oh, everybody had. I have kind of seen expensive. them on yes. a, 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 a white foot before because they yes, have a, they have a little tag them. with the with the yes. rainbow on it. Yes, With the rainbow on it, yes, they have yeah. a little tag with the rainbow okay, on it. Yeah, you remember details. So I could, you know I'm such a visual person. You know, so. Come on, visual. <laughs> oh, wait, so Outfits. Give me bring give me the story. How did you have? Uh, were you always a Birkenstock person? Did you grow up with nah. Birkenstocks? How did they come Santa to Cruz your life? did this to me. Santa mm. Cruz did this to me, y'all. The the dread wearing white people at Santa Cruz mm-hmm. got to me. I said, you know what? Them them shoes look real comfortable. The campus is big as fuck. People yeah. walk all over the place, so you gotta have a comfortable shoe. And people was looking real comfortable, and I was real uncomfortable. Uh-huh. So I'm like, you know what? Let me try these little Birkenstocks. Right. On. You, you had to put the, the put the chucks down. <laughs> Put the chucks down. As far as chucks are the most uncomfortable shoe on the planet. But well, yes. I don't know why you LA niggas down. do it to yourselves. You're like, I'm a with chucks. <laughs> I have n- I don't I haven't worn a chuck since eighth grade because those shits are not the wave. They're not comfortable. I feel like LA dudes like are anatomically like have like evolved over the years to be anatomically different because they're always in chucks in those high ass tube socks. I feel like they've changed. <laughs> you know how like. <laughs> You know what I mean? I feel like I feel like there's like after generations and generations of that, like their feet yeah. look different. You know, like it's slimmer. It's, it's like slimmer. it's a more it's narrow. Ne- foot it's a higher calf. It's a it's higher calf. It's a higher calf and a slimmer foot. <laughs> Absolutely. You know what? LA nigga by their foot. That's right. It it's true. You can if you spot you can spot them. Yeah. Like I was watching. Um, I was watching Eric Andre's Bad Trip recently. Um, Eric Andre. That that movie is is a, is a whole wild. A uh, bad trip. It's really. I I thought it was really funny, but um, okay. occasionally um, Tiffany Haddish. She had, her L A kept her L A accent kept jumping out, and I was like, if they had checked her calves, maybe they would have recognized <laughs> you know, that, she, <laughs> that she. If they had checked Tiffany's calves, they would know. They would know. They that this is Tiffany Haddish. She's from L A. Um, 
What was I going to say, though? Okay, so, yeah, so they're actually comfortable. I've never believed people when they're like, Birkenstocks are so comfortable. They're so comfortable. Jordan, get you. A, I'm, first of all, Birkenstocks seem like something you would like. I'm surprised that you've never put a Birkenstock on. Okay, it. first of all, drag me. Second of all, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, I, I did consider uh, buying the Bostons because uh, that's a that's like a hip Brooklyn guy shoe is the Birkenstock. Bo- the Bostons are the ones, the they're, they're closed toe. So you, I presume you're talking about the, like, two-strap, like, ones with your feet Not- Close toe Birkenstocks, Jordan. Whoa, am I breaking? Am I introducing you to something? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Let me look at them. Birkenstock Boston's Google it. Oh, these fucking. You know what? I... They're they're huge amongst like stylish <laughs> men in Brooklyn. Um, Are they and... black men? Because this is giving very house slipper energy. <laughs> right, and, <laughs> and we'll we'll discuss. Um, it it really right. is. It's like mild house slipper appropriation. But like, you see a lot of like right. like like trendy white media types in Brooklyn wearing these shoes. And I, I flirted with the idea of getting them for a while, but then I, I'm, you know, I'm a child of God and, you know, I, I have a sturdy soul and I, and I, mm. I, I resist the temptation, you know, and I'm still here mm. okay. wearing my Air I'm Max 97s. I'm okay. here. Okay. Oh, we love an Air Max. We I never, love we love an Air Max. Max. What was I rocking mm-hmm. today? I, I, I'm, I'm a big proponent of the, uh, <laughs> the uh, ASIC gel Kayanos. Um, oh, I love an ASIC gel. I don't mm-hmm. know about Kyanos, but I love the ASICs. There's like an old model. Yeah, I'm I'm big into ASICs. I'm a big ASIC boy. Um, but um, I digress. Yeah, okay. So you you found you found them at at a UC Santa Cruz, and they're they're actually comfortable. Yeah. I I went to I went to school. I went to a Northeast Liberal Arts College, and they they the people like that shit too. You know. You they're said like, you went to a Northeast Liberal Arts College. You're not gonna be specific. That's interesting. Okay. I'm not trying to. <laughs> this there's no. There's no flex in my body. I'm a humble Jordan king. Jordan went to <laughs> Yale, y'all. Okay, so, <laughs> so since he won't, I will. Jordan went to Yale. Okay. But yeah, at Yale, there was a lot of people wearing Birkenstocks. A lot of people from California. <laughs> A lot of people from California as well. So like they were, I I saw them a lot and I was like, I don't believe you guys like that. They don't look that comfortable to me. I can't believe it never got to you. You never looked at the Birkenstocks at Yale and been like, you know what? I'm gonna just give it a try. That never went through your brain. Again, I have a sturdy soul. I, I resist temptation. Wow. Um, wow! No, I I felt for some other shit though. I wore I wore Blundstones. You you know what those are? No, what's that? Wow, that we put you on some real Northeast time right now, okay, right quick. Cool. Um, it's like they're like this Australian Chelsea boot. Like Google it. B I think it's B L U N S T O N E D. Yeah, I see it. Bloodstone. Yeah. yeah, you might Blundstone. have seen it. Yeah, you've seen this before, right? Oh, what the hell? Yeah, this yeah. is everywhere. Yeah, it's like yeah, this, like this yeah, is like shoe. that was I was introduced to that at college, and I and I I got a pair, and like now I'm like, why did I get these? You know, they they won. You know what? They won. That that feels very. It, it's giving very Ivy East Coast. It is yeah. giving very that. And it's stupid. Yeah. They're not even that functional. Um, but um, I never did Blundstones. Okay, that's a really a really good one. And I um, you you endorsing them? You endorsing, um. <laughs> Birkenstocks is making me making me consider them more happy. Oh my god, that. I'm gonna be the thing that that sways your soul, your unshakable soul. It's gonna be me. Okay. Put on a bird. Okay. Oh my you get my power. Let me tell you, okay. my power okay. is palpable. You'll Listen, never tell me shit. Again. I said I c- okay. I'm considering. Um. All right. We'll, I'm we'll ship you some. We'll we'll <laughs> shelve that. Uh. Okay. That was a good one. Um. This okay. week. This week I have you? I have one that's kind of near and dear to my soul. One that is uh. Um, an overarching passion of my my adolescence into into early adulthood, um, and it is auto racing, but more specifically, and I'm I'm wearing my Jeff Gordon uh, T-shirt today, hey. uh, but more specifically Formula One. So Jeff Gordon's NASCAR. But um, are you serious? For, yeah, you know, dead ass. So um, all right, let's 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 bring you guys here. So when I was five years old, my mom. Uh, in classic like immigrant parent fashion, like would bring me to Toys R Us like around Christmas time, and be like, "All right, pick out a present," <laughs> and like, <laughs> like not even any kind of cute, like I got you this thing. And it was like, "All right, what do you want?" You know, like sort of thing. And so, and when I was five, I remember going to Toys R Us and I saw this uh, remote control race car, and it was a Jeff Gordon rainbow, you know, paint scheme remote control that's, race car. That's nice. And I and I got it and I and I had it for like years in my childhood and it was one of my favorite things to play with. Even when the battery started dying and it would like slow down, you know. But um that like weirdly got me into 
pay attention to NASCAR and I would and it was NASCAR for those the uninitiated is on Fox or like yeah it's on Fox like virtually every Sunday yeah if you if you chewed into um, to Fox on like Sunday at like three o'clock they're likely showing NASCAR I'm shocked I did not know that was on basic television yeah it's, it's like that. a ESPN lot of type thing. a lot of America watches NASCAR and uh, we're just we're just not a part of that in a lot of America that we they typically associate with that. Mm. Uh, yeah so I'd watch it a lot and then that got me onto the speed channel the speed channel used to show like some NASCAR coverage and shit like that and other auto racing and then well, around middle school I started watching because through the speed channel Formula One um and Again, for the initiated, Formula One is a, a European, um, prestigious European auto racing like championship series. Um, they they race open wheel cars as opposed to like the stock cars that NASCAR. Stock cars is like they're supposed to look like kind of street cars, sort of. Um, like that's why NASCARs oh, yeah, look yeah. yeah like that. But the yeah. open wheel cars are supposed to look like little rockets, essentially. You know. I see the end uh, of Yeah, and um and so and so Formula One is like the little rocket European guys, you know, racing around Monte Carlo. And like I started seeing some of this because I was watching Speed Channel, and just lo- just so happens around the time I started watching, Lewis Hamilton happens, and Lewis Hamilton, most of you probably know as um, yeah. Nicole Scherzinger's husband from Pussycat Dolls. Whoa, 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 I did not know they were fucking married. You're they, lying. I think they're now divorced, but for years they were married, yeah. What? Yeah. He was dating Nicole Scherzinger? Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow, okay, um, okay. And, and, but uh, for auto race events, Lewis Hamilton is like uh, the winningest uh, Formula One driver of all time, and he's the, the only black driver currently racing, and I think might have been the first Formula One black Formula One driver ever. Something. Um, that's not right. Um, but he's he's a British guy, um, and he's so good, and he wins all the time. And then like that was obviously for like, as a young black kid, I was like, oh cool, like there's a black person doing this. Um, yeah, yeah. And so like I got really into Formula One, and now Formula One's kind of having a renaissance because Netflix in the last few years um, start developed this uh, docu series called Drive to Survive, which essentially just documents each season. Of Formula One, and it's really it's like really good like reality television. Honestly, they watch it like all the drivers are so petty. There's like only twenty drivers, and like they're so competitive, oh, and it's like there's really? lots of money, yeah, and they're all just like petty and like and you and you like there's lots of infighting within the teams, like because like oh. because it's like you like each team has two driver, it has two cars. And like those drivers are fighting against one another in addition to fighting against everybody else, uh, and like, they're sharing resources and stuff like that. So it's a oh. really weird, interesting esoteric strange sport and i've like kind of got re gotten back into it because of the netflix show and like um and i honestly i couldn't recommend it enough everyone if you want some weird largely white because again there's only one black driver and he and uh i think he's the first ever um thing to get into my my suggestion is formula maybe start with the netflix show to now it's on espn formula one's on espn on sundays whenever the races happen yeah and like you know a few years maybe you'll see me at, at the monte carlo grand prix okay. shipping some champagne on a yacht with Period. uh you know you so if you see me <laughs> You see me, all right? Period. No, I love that for you. I love that trajectory. I mm-hmm. when we first started talking, we said Formula One. I was like, "Are you serious?" Because one, my boyfriend is obsessed with Formula One. Oh right, Garrick's got the ill car didn't too. No, yeah, which I was like, I never knew it was a thing until yeah. I started dating Garrick, and mm-hmm. he's really into Formula One. And we're going to Belgium um, in August <gasps> to see. A Formula One. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god, birthday. that's we'll crazy. Be, we'll be in Belgium, yeah, for like a I need to get on the phone with Garrick. Why am I talking to you? Why am I not talking that's to you? I'm saying, I'm like, oh, y'all, I, why aren't y'all friends, friends? Like, for real. Like, I'm. That's so funny. Every, I, because a, a whole bunch of shit you say, I'm just like, Garrett's gonna think this is funny. Like, that's Garrett's that's weird. Like so when when like you guys go in November and I book my ticket as well on the same weekend and we didn't all just happen right. to be <laughs> there right. doing the so you then know you and Garrett can go do that. Right. I'll go find you know some other other things. Me and Garrett are doing the doing the lady in the tramp spaghetti. Bruh, <laughs> as, I'm done. I'm as, done. As the I'm cars done. race you by, you can't have my man. You can't have my man Jordan. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. I'm so excited for you too. That's gonna be so fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he bought the tickets, and we're gonna be uh, a going. Do you know by chance of what what who his favorite driver is, or like? 
Is he a Louis, it's Louis, Louis Hamilton? Hamilton. Oh, of course. Big Louis Hamilton right, fan. Right, right. Big. I bought him a Louis Hamilton shirt for his mm-hmm. birthday. He was so excited. Oh, I think hell yeah. Number 44. Is mm-hmm. he number 44? Did I make that up? Yeah, he is number okay. 44. Wow. Okay. okay. Whoa, no, we need, we need to be put like I'm gonna be I'm gonna I'm gonna get like my kid a little Lewis Hamilton poster like it like right in, you know like he's Malcolm you know what I'm saying <laughs> oh my god <laughs> like a pioneer he's gonna put this big, yeah right, right. <laughs> he paved the way tomorrow. right period he's like the reason okay. you can sit in this car is because Lewis Hamilton did you know that black drove. people could drive before Lewis Hamilton <laughs> did, you know? did you know that did you know that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that? Well, now you know. Well, now Lewis you know. Is the reason you got right. License, okay? Right. Okay. Vroom, vroom. Buckle up. <laughs> Buckle up. You better drive fast, too. Mm-hmm. Drive that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So wow, he'd be trying to kill me in his little race car, but, you know. It's oh, fine. yeah. I remember I've been, I've been in it one time. The, the Garrett's, oh, yeah. The Garrett's little oh, race car. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. He got, a, he got a new, he got a faster one. So That's that's aspirational. He got a faster one, and he'd be going to the racetrack, like to go, like actually race this vehicle. I see. That's Jordan, aspirational. You, you moved. I know you didn't like LA, but you moved at the wrong time. Right. Okay. Look, I you could, I could race you. my, my bike. You know, my race your bike, race my your bike, five-speed bike in the, the, right? the <laughs> through Crown Heights. You know, like I, I have my fun. I have my you, fun. Yeah. No, and you have your, you have your New York. Yes, yeah, I'm my New York fun. You do. And I love that for you. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay, I think this was a good in my defense. Yeah. I think this was a a solid in my mm-hmm. defense. We both came with it ten out of ten. You know, I I feel like I'm really well well rounded. You know, <laughs> I just I, I know Formula One. I know Birkenstocks. You know what I mean? Just I like... love this segment of the show where you do the you do <laughs> me- media criticism of our show during our own show. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like doing a YouTube review of our show. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is really good, you guys. Um, I think this is. I think we did really good this time. Yeah, but yes, mm-hmm. I did do that. Woo. Okay, so yeah. moving forward, now we'll get into the meat and potatoes of this shit. We're gonna talk yeah. about good old ginger ale. The ginger homie, ale. Ginger and ale. Um. So we settled on ginger ale because black people like that shit. I <laughs> true. <laughs> I think I'm. I, I'm. I challenge all the black people listening to this show. To like, uh, to like scour their past and be like, when when I was sick, was ginger ale not one of the things offered to me by one of my black parents uh, Please. as a remedy? Please. I, I no matter seen... what genre of black you are, mm-hmm. if you're Caribbean, mm-hmm. if you are African, mm-hmm. if you are American, the diaspora right. generally short, ginger tall. Ale. Short, you know, tall, medium, small. Medium, diaspora. small. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Small, medium. Right. I have a distinct memory of being like like ten, and like when I got sick, I'd have to go to my aunt Weeda's house, and uh, and my aunt, my aunt Valerie, who lived with my aunt Weeda, would like would uh, take care of uh, me, and I had like remember like sitting at home eating saltines and and drinking ginger ale and watching the sound of music and i remember it was the sound of music because it was on vhs and you had to like it was two tapes long so i had to change out the tapes oh my god to watch it yeah oh. now, and, and that was supposed to heal you that was supposed to heal you mm-hmm. that did i'm sure it did too yeah i mean i I'm, i feel spiritually healed at least i, I, I cherish 100%. it 100 definitely it got your mind right i know it did <laughs> yeah okay so okay we, we got we got a couple notes about ginger yeah. ale yeah, ginger um, ale. First of all, I want to start off with a question, though, for yeah. you, Jordan. Okay. Do you consider ginger ale a soda? I saw this on Twitter, like, <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Do you uh, consider it a soda? Yes, it is obviously a soda. Obviously, I'm, right? People yeah. saying no. People, was people, what, people calling it juice? No. What is it? They're they calling saying, it Pepto-Bismol? People are saying it is a medical remedy. It is not a soda. <laughs> They're saying sodas are unhealthy and ginger ale is not that. Uh, getting to the getting out to the bottom of how black people decided that ginger ale was was medicinal is probably a dissertation's worth of you know like you know <laughs> research and anthropological digging. But we did find some interesting things. You know, like uh, I I guess I'll I'll start with um, a time tested uh, veritable site, the Shade Room, um, ran an article <laughs> and mm-hmm. in uh, January twenty twenty called "Black People and Ginger Ale: An Unbreakable Bond." Um, mm. And then it, they just basically, it's a blog post. I don't want to call it an article. They, uh, oh, they, no. <laughs> sorry, no sure, shade. Let me be real. Okay, no shade, it's shade a room. blog post. <laughs> but then they link to a bunch of really funny tweets, you know, which is like, as we know, is the source of all good information on the internet about with black people basically just giving testimonials about how, like, yeah, ginger ale is is a thing that they drink when they're, they're sick. So we have um, 
uh, at Hassan Urban, Haas Urban being, what kind of slander are you attempting here? Uh, I drink ginger ale and still feel nauseous. I just try to let y'all know. Um, and he was, he was, he was saying that he ginger ale didn't work. And then like, no, pe- did, now did you drink it right, Hassan? And then all the, and then like you know, people piled on, people piled on. They said directions clearly say drink some ginger ale and go lay down. So That's he didn't, he didn't go lay down. Um, and then somebody else asked, "Did you also neck a sleeve of saltines? It doesn't work otherwise." Which is First true. Of all, not neck a sleeve. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Um, not neck a sleeve. Um, and then and then people asked, we were asking harder hitting questions like, "What brand of of uh, ginger ale did you drink?" Someone said Schweppes? Question mark. And another person said Schweppes in all caps. Schweppes. Um, and because like, <laughs> the obvious answer is ginger ale. Like if you want the real kind of like medicinal healing qualities of any ginger ale, you need to drink Canada Dry. Canada Drive. Canada That's the Drive. One. That's the one. That's it. Um, yeah. But um, otherwise, you're drinking soda. Yeah. You know? yeah otherwise, you're drinking soda. Yeah. But you you had some more like kind of like astute observations about right. what what this so, connection could be. I did a very brief 15 minute um, <laughs> deep dive yes. on ginger ale. Okay, so I started at the top. Ginger. Okay, the ginger and the ginger ale part. Break it down. I googled, "Is ginger good for your stomach?" And according to Healthline, and I quote, ginger is a common natural treatment for stomach issues such as bloating and indigestions. Studies demonstrate that supplementing with ginger can help increase the movement of food through your stomach, improve indigestion, decrease bloating, and reduce intestinal cramping, end quote. Mm. So, Make yes. your belly nice. It'll make your belly nice, I'm make telling you. Make your belly nice. One. So, mm-hmm. yes, ginger is good for your ginger stomach. Ginger is now, good. Ginger, good. Ginger, good. Mm-hmm. Now, now, ginger ale. <laughs> on the other hand, um, not not so much. So I did a little Google on that. <laughs> okay. Is ginger ale good for your stomach? Mm-hmm. According to my sources, my sources being health.clevelandclinic.org. One, the ginger and ginger ale is fake. It usually isn't real. If it is real, it's mm-hmm. in too small quantities to have any real effect. And then three, it has too much sugar in it. And so it's counterproductive. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, I'm 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 reading here that Canada Dry has less than two percent of ginger extract in its in ginger uh, extract extract two percent <laughs> less okay. than less than two percent of ginger extract is present in Canada Dry. Um, so it's it's barely even ginger. Okay. It's like it's like a barely. It's a, it's a ginger themed. It's a ginger inspired drink. Honestly, not a ginger themed drink. It is. It's like it's a ginger themed drink. Comparison, I guess. It's a ginger themed drink, essentially, and while that's fine, right, it doesn't it's like, seem to actually help. But somewhere along the line, we, being many black people speaking, speaking anecdotally, were convinced that ginger ale is some sort of like has some sort of like medicinal, if not medicinal, at least like palliative, like you know, like calming, you know, soothing, uh, nourishing qualities to it. And well, you had some thoughts on that. This could be placebo effect. You know, it could be like, yeah, yeah, I know it's ginger in here. So (laughs) this ginger ale about to help my stomach. Like, I know. Right, 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 right. Which makes sense to me. If you think it helps, it probably helps. Exactly. You know? Right. And in the same way that my ancestors told me chitterlings are to eat, my ancestors You can't keep saying that. (laughs) I just had to say it again. I had to. (laughs) The same way that they told me that, they also told me ginger ale is what you consume in your body when you mm-hmm. when your stomach is upset with you. When you've done something that you're not supposed to do to your stomach, you throw a little ginger ale directly following that, and you're good. Boom, man. I don't know what Pepto Bis- I don't know Pepto Bismol. I don't know none of that. I know ginger ale. So, so, so Sequoia, are you suggesting that like after generation of generation of this occurring? That like many people just have like this positive association, this like placebo, like like you know, I it's like when you every time if you get a, a dog a treat every time it like uh pees in the right spot, you know. This is a terrible is analogy. The, uh, what the hell is that? What the hell positive is that reinforcement? Uh, the something effect. Mm, it's not even the effect. I don't even remember that. Cause Pavlovian. I Pavlovian. Pavlovian. Mm. There it is. Um, I'm gonna take your word for it. But yes, uh, <laughs> the Pavlovian thing. Well, that's not it. But yes, that is that is a good analogy with that. You tell people mm-hmm. it helps, and it helps. Yeah, I, I have this. I have another uh, ginger ale I remember actually too. Uh, when I was fifteen, I like tore my ACL playing uh, football, and I had to get surgery to repair it. And when you get surgery on that, it's like a kind of a, a like low key a major surgery. And um, yeah. 
and when you when you're recovering, they give you they usually like drugs. They usually give you like uh-huh. like um, oxys like to to recover. And I I remember I had to take a couple of those, and um, I took one. And like you take one, and you feel like the pain literally take two, and you're like kind of like flying a little bit, you know? Oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like dark. It's a slippery slope. But um, I remember, no. I remember like in the first night I, I come back from uh, from surgery, I took like two and I was like, you know, I felt like I was floating. I felt like that meme of Bobby Hill. <laughs> you know, he's listening to the music and he comes out yes. his body. You know, yes. like, that was me off the two oxys or whatever. And I, and oh, I remember my mom God. brought me ginger ale to my bedside. Oh As like God, a bring you down off the right? right? Well, just like to be like, this is your sick, so you're you're hurt, so this is what you drink. Here's and it, it's just like I'm like, why is that a thing? But like I did, I remember <laughs> drinking and it feeling good. I'm like, oh yeah, this is the sick drink. This is like what you do. Wow. So sick. then you associated it with sickness. From What's then it? on, it was what? like this is the sick drink. This is the sick drink. Um, but like, I think you, you we were talking earlier, and I think you kind of like hit the nail on the head in that like part of this is that like there's there's like the the American health system has failed black people in so many ways. Um, and, uh, and like, uh, it can't be a coincidence that, like, this non medicinal arguably, I mean, not arguably, actually bad for you thing has has been used as, like, some sort of, you know, replacement for what would traditionally be real care, you know? Um, and I yeah. have a theory yeah, as to why it. that is. Mm-hmm. It's, okay, so the American health care system is ass. If you're not American... Congratulations, one. But two, going to the doctor here, even if you have insurance, is expensive. Like, my copay right now with insurance is $45. Something, if I just need, like, <laughs> some light, nobody's trying to come up off $45 to go see the doctor for him and tell me nothing wrong with me, okay? Yeah. One. Two, if you think about how often doctors don't believe black people when we say we're having specific pains or specific symptoms, it seems like it could be a waste of money for black people to go to the doctor sometimes. I see how we get to that conclusion where it's like, why would I go to this doctor? He's not going to fucking listen to me anyways. He's going to tell me you're fine. You know, it's nothing wrong with you. You're not in pain, blah, blah, blah. Send me home to die or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. When I could just drink this medicinal drink that my ancestors have told me time and time again works that I associate with healing mm-hmm. when I'm sick and seems to work because I think it works. Why right. would I, you know, I, that seems like a logical conclusion to come to, to me as a black. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it's, it feels like it's like the, a case of one of many cases of like self-medicating that like black people have kind of resorted to as a means of dealing with like all these inequities, you know, like arguably, various forms of music could be thought of in the same way you know you know like as a as a way to like deal with pain and like you know that like and deal with the lack of care and treatment that like we were not afforded um right and like it's not it's not a secret that like soda and um other junk foods other high fat high sugar foods have been been shoved down black people's throats for years and years point very pointedly by you know companies and stuff like that where in in Doing my little prep for the show, I like came across. You know, there's a I came across this article from uh, the Atlantic from a few years ago about how in the early 20th century, Coke was associated as a what as a white drink. You know, Coke is is famously founded in um in Georgia and and, and based in Atlanta. And um they for for years were like trying to keep themselves associated as the drink the preferred uh, soft drink of white people and Pepsi. Which was like um, and they, their chief competitor, and was was trailed behind them, and still continues to trail behind them. You know, as far as far as popularity, decided that um, the way that they could maybe compete was by cornering the black market. So, um, according to this Atlantic article, in the in the forties, they um, they hired black sales representatives to work the southern black belt and and like black urban areas in the north. Um, and they hired black fashion models to be in ads. They 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 put took out ads in pub black publications. They even at one point had Duke Ellington hired as a spokesperson. And for for a while in the early twentieth century, Pepsi was like the black one, and and Coke was the white one. And so like racial lines have been drawn along soda before, like from the jump it seems. Um, and like there's all sorts of things happening with soda. Um, but um. Uh, like in the, in 2013, uh, Bloomberg and the, the then mayor of New York City was pushing this like paternalistic uh, and like you know health a, a 
on his face health conscious um, soda ban, like a ban of large sugary drinks in New York, and and many uh, like um, many special interest groups, uh, most notably the NAACP, were against it uh, because because of the way in which it targeted um, uh, when it was so paternalistic and it was prescribing behaviors to largely black and brown community. It was saying, you guys are doing this thing wrong and this is how you should be living. Um, and two, um, the and the biggest financial impact it would have would be on the, the bodega owners and like the low, the small store owners who mm-hmm. were selling who were selling these drinks largely. You know, like the supermarkets weren't going to be affected by this as much as uh, the people whose like main income came from selling these products. Um, mm-hmm. And it so eventually got shot down and, you know, Bloomberg is a cornball and tried to run for president um mm-hmm. we and then forget. we forget we remember bloomberg and uh, <laughs> we saw that sticker on your water bottle you know cheryl what is your, it? Oh. your bloomberg sticker bloomberg 2020 oh, sticker no. we didn't forget we didn't <laughs> oh, forget cheryl. kyle Don't we didn't think. forget we know, we we know kyle it. we know who your mom yeah. donated money to we know like he needed it um <laughs> yeah and then and then we were just talking about the like the infamous kendall jenner uh Pepsi protest ad debacle. Like, nice. all this stuff has been staged over soda. And I think it's this, like, weird, uh, bizarre, sort of, like, uh, like trench, I um, mean, you know, I guess, like, battleground, you know, of, like, it is it is one of, you know, it's, it is, like, always going to be this product or, or for many years has been this product that, like, a lot of people engage with in some capacity. And, like, um, we're always kind of, like, either... Um, either purposely or are like subconsciously projecting our politics and projecting our social values into the way we market products, you know? Um, hate to see it. And yeah, and so like Pepsi, you know, the black, the black one, to try to make this ad with Kendall Jenner that was her like bridging the divide between the cops in this protest and like the, like the, the not like the protesters by offering a cop a, a, oh, a can of Lord. Pepsi. Um, Lord Jesus. And, and it just is like, it's almost like, I mean, nothing surprises me now in 2021. Nothing surprises me now. <laughs> but um, but at the time, we were like, what in the world? We like, were you were outraged. Yeah. Like, God damn the tone deafness. Yeah. And then um, most recently, um, I was, most recently in January, the Times reported up, um, on this, I guess, a prominent horse trainer in the, like, you know, professional horse racing world. A man named Eric Guillaume um, was... Uh, he had a he had a, a horse a new horse that was doing very well, um, and I guess he had a bone to pick with the lone black analyst on TVG, which is like the, I guess the horse racing network um, that, that broadcasts a lot of the races, um, and and as a way to get to get express his I guess anger at this this black um, analyst named Ken Rudolph, Eric Gio decided to name his horse Grape Soda. Um, wow. And he Insane. tweeted, he tweeted on New Year's Day, this cult will run next week and has a u- unique name in honor of a TVG analyst. And he used, Eric is a white man, uh, mind you. He tweeted, he used the black power fist emoji at, on that tweet. And for Lord, like take, like the, the, sh- the sheer audacity. <laughs> I It's unmatched, and unmatched. He, he was really like trying to be like, capital R racist, you know, like, which is, uh, you, I mean, you don't, you don't see it. You don't see it happening. So, uh, you know, so hard R, you know, as mm, these days, mm, even and, Trump wasn't, yeah. Yeah, wasn't <laughs> trying to do all that. Like, God. right. And, and so he, um, he has since been, uh, kicked out of, uh, the professional horse racing world, it seems. Um, oh, and now he's trying to get into the formula one world, huh? Oh, pff, we can, <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> it just the professional race racing world over into the car racing world. It just listen, hate and racism is not welcome in the professional Formula One <laughs> world where there are no black people and virtually no non-white people. Okay, this okay. is an inclusive space that is almost right. inclu- incredibly segregated. And I want him to know that if he so much as thinks about joining this elite white. <laughs> European a European institution. D- you know, just get it out of your head, Eric. There's gonna be some problems. There's, There's gonna, gonna be, some, be problems. some problems. Okay, so don't even think about it. Yeah. Don't you see fucking Louis up here representing yeah. for the Negro race? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So don't. My boy. So don't. Yeah. So don't even try it. Um. 
yeah, so it's been, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's strange how soda is tied to all these different things and, uh, and it has been like, comp- like repeatedly kind of brought, brought into, it has been like marked racially for so long. Um, and I think does. ginger ale is, it's like not a coincidence that ginger ale is, you know, occupies the space that, it does. I think like another reason why black people might love ginger ale. So we know, we know America hates black people. Like right. that's, okay. that's a given. Right. Uh, um, America hates uh, hates us, and we hate it here too. Please, please. Mm-hmm. Okay. If we had it our way, we wouldn't ever. We came. hate you too. We would not have come. We hate you too. Okay. <laughs> Let's start there. Um, <laughs> two. America hates black people, and therefore they try to make sure black people don't have access to anything that is potentially healthy, um, good for your mental, mm-hmm. or anything of the sort. Therefore, mm-hmm. they put us in these things called food deserts often, which is um, an area often urban, not necessarily always, though, sometimes rural, just where there's not any access to fresh food, like fresh meat, fresh groceries, fresh fruits and vegetables. Like most of the food mm-hmm. um, availability is fast foods or, you know, un- the more unhealthy options. But if you got to eat, you're going to eat, right? right? Like if there's no unhealthy, if there's no healthy food available, you're not going to go without eating because the shit you about to eat is unhealthy. Mm-hmm. You're going to eat the unhealthy food. Right. So I think ginger ale is more readily available in a lot of black areas because those are often food deserts. Those mm-hmm. overlap sometimes um as opposed to fresh ginger which is something that is actually helpful for mm-hmm. your stomach yeah. so i feel like black people we had the right idea like it's like yeah <laughs> we know ginger is helpful like right, yeah right, right, so right. we're gonna so we're gonna get some ginger uh-huh. you go to the corner store they don't have ginger right poppy doesn't so have now, ginger they, they, the bodega doesn't have ginger yeah so now you get ginger ale because you're like i mean it's the same thing, right? You know, like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's a ginger, so like... Right. And after generations and generations of that, you end up with a torn ACL in bed and your mom brings you some ginger ale because she's like, that's High what you need. Oxy. High right, oxy. floating off the oxy. Floating yeah. off It'd it, be like you know? that. Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So I think that's why Jack, black people end up liking ginger ale as much as we do. And not to mention, it's delicious. Have y'all ever had it? Yeah, have you ever had a cold glass of ginger ale? Just, oh, it's so or, good. Actually, that's I don't even let it leave the can. I just like juice. I just straight it out of the raw dog it out the can. You know what I'm saying? Period. Raw dog it straight out the can. That's, that's the can. That's how it's the coldest. Yeah. If you let it hit the glass and stuff, it warms it up a little bit. It's you know? so crisp. You let it sit in the can, crisp. Oof. It Oof. just like, you know, it makes yeah. your mouth pucker a little right. bit. It's yeah. wonderful. The bubbles in your brain a little bit. Yeah. God, it's it so does. yeah. Oof, no, that might be is... my brain disintegrating, but it don't feel like it. It feels mm-hmm. like it's giving me energy. You know what I mean? Right. It feels like it's doing what it's supposed to do. That medicinal right. property healing. If there's anything I miss about the trap that is working for any of these fancy media companies, you know, I was just about to say that it's it's those the, those kitchens filled stocked with snacks and so and drinks, which include ginger ale. Often, you know, when if you get a good a good office kitchen with some ginger ale stocked in the fridge oh you go crazy uh, you go crazy uh, man remember the days when i don't know about you i used to think i made it because i worked at a place that had fucking ginger ale in the kitchen mm. what a time status symbol. what a time the naivety right the naivety. right you're on your snapchat story like <laughs> ginger ale guys. yeah like at, on lunch <laughs> On lunch, yeah, Suck, no, this is free. Actually. Right, this is free. Sucking down a Canada Dry. Right, no, they love black people. They have ginger ale. Did mm-hmm. you see the? Yeah, did page? you not? They obviously love black right. people. Yeah, your your friends come to visit the office. You're like, and here's where we keep the ginger ale. Um, right, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, ginger <laughs> ale, and it's like, yeah, right. ginger ale. Also, they gave it such a great name. It like it's not like it's not like Mountain Dew. It's like ginger right? <laughs> ale. <laughs> Wait, say it again. Say it again like that. Ginger. <laughs> this is going to be our outro music. Ginger. <laughs> Ale. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, why do you actually have a radio voice when you, t- when you do wow. it like that? Like, it sounds like an look. actual radio voice. Look, look, look. 
Oh my god, my stomach. Okay. Mm. Ooh, see, my stomach is already ready for the ginger ale. Even talking mm. about it, my stomach's mm. like, okay, where's right. that? Though? You're having you're it. having a physical reaction. A like, physical reaction right. to the mere mention of ginger ale. Right. We've been like, we're, me. we're me. hardwired. Um, Harp, so you know what? So it does actually work. That's what it is. Fuck <laughs> that other shit. The shit right. works because right. my stomach right now is right. telling me he should have named the horse ginger ale. I don't know what you're thinking. Oh, period. <laughs> instead of instead of grape soda, grape soda, grape drink. They should have named that horse oh, ginger man. ale. If he really knew, but he don't because he's I'm, white. He don't know what we like. I'm dead at this guy being like, "This will show him." <laughs> I'm gonna name my, my horse name. Grape Soda. Grape Soda. Oh, that really hurts. Oh uh, yeah, that'll that. get it. That'll. Oh, All right. What is this? Middle school. Um, <laughs> For real. Right. Grape Soda. Deep. Oh, and I can't see you. Want to turn the lights off either? <laughs> I know. I know. Um. Okay. I think that. I think. I think that's it. Yeah, we feel like we can leave it there. I think that's all I had. I yeah. think I, that's all I had for good old ginger mm-hmm. ale. I think we did her justice. Um, I would never do ginger ale's name in vain. So, you know, girl, reach out. Let me know if you don't mm-hmm. appreciate the way that mm-hmm. I handled this topic. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, please. Please. You know where yeah. our email. You know where to find yeah, us. You know our email. Actually, y'all don't know our email. So, mm-hmm. in case y'all didn't know, we have an email address. It is... Black people love Paramore at gmail.com. Right. You can um, send us uh, suggestions for future episode topics there. You can send us questions about ourselves. I am 26. I am a Gemini. Um, what are you doing? This is not, this is not huh? the, this is not the, uh, the, what do you mean? We're huh? not, we're not doing our charts. We're not going to do our no? charts. Look, oh. I'm a I, private person. But I'm also uh, 26 Aquarius triple air sign. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, okay, my Jordan is an Aquarius. So anyways, um, yeah, you can reach us there. You can find out more about my astrology, um, sun, moon, rising, and ascendant. I, right. you know, we're also going to do an episode about astrology, y'all, because let me tell you something. If it's one thing black people really do love, it is astrology. And I know I am black people. I love this shit for real. Okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, you can reach us there. You can also reach us on our social media accounts. That is at BPLP Pod. Mm-hmm. And that's across all social media accounts, which is really just Instagram and Twitter. Don't have a TikTok. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I guess, you know, guys, thank you for tuning in. Yeah, if you want to send any tips or, or things like that to the email, you know where to find you know it. Um, uh, Black people up here more at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to have any feedback about how we're doing, how our voices sound. Whether we could mm-hmm. be um, adding more, be more melismatic with the, our delivery, anything oh, like that. Melisma? Melisma. Okay. You know, I'm, I, oh, okay. Wow, wow, wow. Tap into my little music Aretha. Journalist. <laughs> Let's go on, music journalist. Paramore. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, all right. We got the Melisma out right now. Give it. Yes. Um, yeah, you should uh, reach, us, reach out to us. Um, but. Yeah. Oh, we did want to talk to y'all about one more thing. We are, next week, we are probably going to change the first segment from In My Defense to White Elephant, okay? And this will be a segment where Jordan gives me something, like, gives me, like, a music band or song that I've never heard. I listen to it. I tell him what I think of it, honestly, on next week's episode, and I give him the same. He does the same, okay? Um... Y'all let us know if you prefer In My Defense or White Elephant after we've done both of them. And we will stick with whichever one y'all like. Or whichever one we like, really, honestly. So, mm-hmm. yeah. We do what we want. We make the rules. Period. I'm yeah. the captain now. Except when Sequoia is the captain. We run this. Yeah. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Jordan's co-captain. <laughs> and I'm a, 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 a captain in chief. Captain in <laughs> chief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>